It's been a little while since I posted a video that was strictly instructional. I've posted a lot of videos in the past about Android hacking and walking through how to use different tools or different security and hacking techniques, but I wanted to go over sort of a general purpose, like hacking security tech thing that might be useful to a lot of people. So I'm going to go over how to set up a local Apache web server. A web server can be used for all kinds of things, whether you're in the hacker space and you're using it to set up a command and control server, or maybe you're just hosting some scripts or some sort of thing that you're going to use as part of like a cross-site scripting attack or something like that. Or if you're in the maker space and maybe you're setting up some project with a Raspberry Pi. In fact, if any of y'all saw the video I posted a while back where I used a solar panel to run a Raspberry Pi Zero, I actually had a local web server running on that Raspberry Pi Zero for part of that project. And for the example in this video, I'm actually going to use a Raspberry Pi as my platform that I'm going to run the web server on. But you can use pretty much any sort of computer that you have. You can use a Raspberry Pi, you can use any sort of laptop or desktop computer that is running Linux on it. You can use a virtual machine, and I'm sure you could do something similar to this on a Windows machine or a Mac, but I just have way more experience doing this with Linux, so that's how I'm gonna do it in this example. And if anyone wants to follow along with me, I'm gonna mostly be following this tutorial from the Ubuntu website for installing and configuring Apache. So I will have this link in the description. So if anyone wants to check that out, you can follow along as I'm going through this. So first, we have an overview of just what Apache is. Apache is an open source web server that's available for Linux servers free of charge. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to set up Apache, some basic Apache configurations, and what you'll need. They obviously want you to use an Ubuntu server because this is an Ubuntu tutorial, but again, you can use pretty much anything that's running Linux. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi, and you're also going to need SSH access to your server, and you're going to need some basic Linux command line knowledge. On to the next step, we need to install Apache. So I have SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi, and of course if you have access to the machine that you're doing this on with a keyboard and a monitor, you can just type all these commands and everything I'm going to do directly into a terminal. You don't have to SSH into it. This is just for convenience so I can have everything on one screen for this video. But following the steps in this tutorial, first we're going to run sudo apt update and after that we're going to run sudo apt install apache 2. So after that finishes now we have apache installed on our machine so i'm going to run ifconfig to get our ip address and that's going to be 192.168.1.3 and when i go to that ip address in my web browser now i see this apache debian default web page. So this web page is actually running on my Raspberry Pi where I installed Apache. This is the default web page that is being hosted on that web server when you initially install Apache. So we go into the next step in the tutorial, we're going to create our own website. So as I just mentioned, by default Apache comes with a basic site and you can actually find the HTML code for this web page in the slash var slash www slash HTML directory. So if I go to that directory and I run an ls on it, you see that the only file in that directory is index.html. So this is actually where I'm going to deviate from the guide from Ubuntu. If all you want to do is host one web page on your web server for whatever project you're working on, then you can just delete this index file. Then you can create a new index file and you can make that whatever HTML code you want or anything you want running on your web page for your project. For example, in the tutorial, they have some sample HTML code. We can just copy that and then we paste it into our new index.html file. And now if we refresh that default page that was there before, now it has our new website with our new content that just says I'm running this website on an Ubuntu server. But let's say you have multiple projects that need to have a web server component and you don't want to have several machines running at the same time and you just want to have a web page for each project that's running on this one web server. You can just create a new HTML file in that directory. So in this var slash www slash HTML directory, we have that index.html file that we just created. So we want to create a new file called, I don't know, subscribe.html. We create that and I'm just, as a template, I'm going to paste that uh, sample code from the tutorial we were just looking at. 
instead of Ubuntu rocks, I'm going to say Core Secure rocks. And I'm going to say, instead of I'm running this website on an Ubuntu server server, I'm going to say subscribe to Core Secure. Now, if I run an ls in that directory, I have two files. I have that index file and I have that subscribe.html. So now if I go to that same IP address from our web server, but at the end of it, I add a slash subscribe.html. Now all of a sudden I'm going to that other HTML file that I just created instead of that index. By default, when you go to your web server without any sort of file name or anything appended to the end of it, it will by default open that index file that's in the directory. But you can put several different HTML files in that directory. And if you append that file name in the URL, then it will go directly to that HTML file instead of the index file. So we can go through the rest of this tutorial because there are some interesting things in here still to go through. So the first thing they want you to do is create a new directory inside the slash bar slash www directory. So we were in slash bar slash www slash HTML. So we're going to back up one level into just slash www and we're going to run sudo make directory and then whatever you want to name the directory for your new website. So I'm going to name mine core secure. So now if we run an ls, we now see we have the directory for HTML, which we were working in before. And now we have our new directory called core secure. And then we're going to CD into that directory and it should be empty. So we need to make our index file inside that directory. So I'm again going to use Vim, which is my preferred text editor. Feel free to use Nano or whatever text editor you want to use. I just like Vim. And again, I'm going to copy their sample HTML as just a template. Again, I'm going to change some of the contents of this just to make it different from that page we made before. So the title is just going to be Core Secure. And instead of I'm running this website on a Ubuntu server server, I'm going to make it this is Core Secure's new website. So now it goes to the next step, which is to create a virtual host file. So it'll show up when we type in GCI, in my case would be coresecure.example.com. So we go to the next step and we're going to CD into the slash Etsy slash Apache 2 slash sites available directory. And if we look inside that directory, we're going to find a 000-default.conf file. So we're going to copy that file just to make it a starting point for our new configuration file. So we're going to do cp to copy the name of that file. And then we're going to name our new file coresecure.conf. So the first thing that it says to do in the tutorial is to change the server admin email address. But that really doesn't matter. I'm not going to use this for anything that's going to require someone to be able to contact me for any sort of server admin related issues. So I'm just going to delete it. It doesn't affect how your server runs, but it's up to you. If you want to put your email address in there, feel free. It really doesn't matter. And then we need to set the document root directive. So it points to the directory that we created for our new website. So the default one was set to slash var slash www slash HTML. We're going to change that to slash var slash www slash core secure. And here's where it gets a little bit messy because they tell you that you need to change the server name directive to gci.example.com or in our case, it would be core secure.example.com. And it says this ensures people reach the right site instead of the default one when they type in gci.example.com. Something they don't tell you very clearly in this tutorial is that this will not get people who visit that URL to go to your website. It doesn't actually tell you until you get to step five. If you go down to further reading and go to virtual host example, on this page, there are a bunch of uh, example virtual host files. And there's a note at the top of it that says, creating virtual host configurations on your Apache server does not magically cause DNS entries to be created for those host names. You must have the names in DNS resolving to your IP address or nobody else will be able to see your website. There are ways around that. As it mentions here, if the person that is going to that website has your host set in the host file, 
then they will go to your server when they access that host entry, but that will only work for any machine that actually has that edited host file. So all this stuff they're talking about with like the server name directive and the virtual host file and all of those things are very useful things to know if you're like in the web hosting world. But for my purposes, most of the time when I'm creating a local web server, it's only going to be visible on my local network and I'm not going to buy a domain name or anything like that. So all of this stuff is kind of not useful for me. But there is one thing that I wanted to mention about the virtual host configuration file that might be useful to you depending on what kind of project you're doing. When you copied that configuration file, you may have noticed at the very top of this file, it says virtual host star colon 80. That number 80 is actually the port number that it's serving your website on. So by default, when you serve up a website that is going over HTTP and not HTTPS, it goes over port 80. But say we want to serve this website over port 81. Now if we go back to the tutorial and look at the last step, it goes over how to activate the virtual host file. So we need to run a2 insight, a2 insight coresecure.conf, enabling site core secure. To activate the new configuration, you need to run systemctl reload apache2. So now just a reminder, if we go to our IP address with nothing behind it, it just goes over port 80 and it opens this page. So now at the end of that, if we put colon, which is how you assign the port that you're accessing, if we do port 81, now we see this is Core Secure's new website. And if you remember, that was the contents of the web page that we created when we made that new directory. So now just to recap, we know how to create an Apache web server and host a default web page. We know how to edit that web page and make it whatever content we want. We know how to make multiple web pages, which can be accessed through the URL directly going to that HTML file inside that default directory. And we know how to serve web pages on multiple ports, which can be accessed through the URL going to a specific port number instead of a specific file name in the URL. Hopefully this can be useful to you, whether you're a security or a hacker person, or if you're a maker, maybe you want to have a camera feed from a Raspberry Pi or something, and then you want to be able to view that camera feed from your phone, which is actually what I did in that project where I powered a Raspberry Pi Zero from a solar panel. But whatever it is that you're doing that might benefit from a web server, I hope this is helpful and can make that job a little bit easier for you.